Hi students, welcome back to the online uh, video lectures of medical imaging course. This is the second introductory uh, lecture uh, on medical imaging. In this lecture, let's take a look at some of the real-time clinical applications of medical imaging so that it would give you an idea of how we as an electrical engineer would be able to contribute to different problems in medical imaging. What I will do here is I have picked up here uh, seven clinical applications and out of them I think four of these applications are the ones which uh, our students at our institute in IIT Thirupati are working. So let's take a look at uh, these applications at a very high level. We will not go into any of the nitty gritty details or technical details of them. So the first application is detection and classification of traumatic brain injuries in head using CT images. This work is done in collaboration with uh, Dr. Amit Agrawal and uh, my PhD student Sindhura is working uh, on this problem. So let me briefly introduce what this problem is about. You all know that head injuries are quite common. When a person meets with an accident and taken to the hospital, so the first thing that they usually do to diagnose whether there is any injury or not is to take a CT scan of that person. There are other uh, modalities also acquired like magnetic resonance imaging. But the most common and default uh, modality used is computed tomography. So if you remember from the previous lecture, this uses X-rays. It gives a 3D image of the object of interest. And uh, one thing with the uh, CT image or uh, X-rays in general is they could give very good information about the bones. So the skull and other bones, you could very clearly see them. And uh, there are other reasons as well to go for uh, CT imaging rather than the other modalities. This is very fast to acquire, unlike MR imaging. And this is very inexpensive compared to other image modalities and uh, this is widely available uh, almost in all hospitals uh, will be having the CT scanner so these for these reasons they go for a CT scan so once the scan is acquired uh, the doctor goes through it and figures out where there are injuries so for example the slide there would be showing you different kinds of possible injuries for example epidural hematoma subdural hematoma vascular injuries, intraaxial injuries, there are different possible injuries are there. So the doctor goes through it and then figures out what are the type of injuries and depending on the type of injury, the next course of treatment will be planned. So the purpose of this work is, can we do this automatically and tell that in a way caution the doctor that take a more uh, detailed look at so and so regions in your CT scan and uh, there is a high probability of a potential injury in this region. So that's the detection of injuries. So this will essentially help the doctor any of the potential injuries which he may otherwise be overlooking either because uh, that is tricky to identify, very small or uh, difficult to identify or it could be because of the amount of uh, slices that he has to go through okay, for various other reasons as well. It would be also useful if we could be also classify and say that there is a high probability that there is a potential injury here and this is for example let's say intracranial hematoma. So that's the whole objective of this work. For the time being I'll skip the details of uh, how you come up with uh, algorithms or methods to detect the injuries and classification but I'm sure you could already see here uh, how image processing could be quite helpful in this application. This is the workflow for uh, this application, classification of normal and abnormal findings and then you could uh, come up with methods for classification of these injuries as well. There is another application that we are currently working on uh, in our lab here, analysis of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures based on PET CT scans. So let me make you clear what the words here mean. Let me start with simple ones. You already have seen PET scan in the last class, positron emission tomography. 
where did it come in our classification there it comes under nuclear medicine essentially a radioactive tracer is injected and then uh, its emission is uh, detected and you will be getting a three dimensional positron emission tomography scan that gives you the metabolic activity ct scan you already know by this time this is an x-ray based uh, scan that gives you the 3d information 3d structural information pet scan would give you the metabolic information so this is again the work we are doing in collaboration with the local swims hospital the students currently involved are uh, Achina Ramchandran mtech student and also phd student sindura is also involved in this work so let me give you a brief introduction to what this problem is about you all know perhaps epileptic seizures so the common term we use uh, is fits for it so there will be seizures there okay and uh, this one can uh, agnize it based on different modalities also for example eeg where they put a cap here and the electrical activity of the brain is observed there you can observe an abnormality in eeg scan moreover even ct and mri scans if you take uh, both the scans would give you the structural information there also you could see structural defects there is another type of uh, abnormality or disease which is called as pnes a psychogenic non epileptic seizure so earlier one is called epileptic seizures this is not epileptic seizure so you call it as non epileptic seizures and the source is psychogenic okay psychologically generated to an extent the problem here is that outward symptoms if we observe the patients with pnes will also be having seizures you cannot observe any electrical act abnormality in the electrical activity of the brain from eeg because the causes of uh, these kinds of uh, abnormalities could be coming from the structures which are there deep inside the brain that might not be picked up by eeg and structurally you won't see any difference so even if you take ct or mri scans you won't be able to see any difference there however the hypothesis here is if you look at the metabolic activity of the brain there are certain regions in the brain where you could observe either hyperactivity or hypoactivity what does that mean hyperactivity means typical metabolic activity if you consider in a healthy subject if the activity metabolic activity is higher than that then you call it as hyper activity we also call uh, so and so is hyper means highly active right the opposite of that is hypo metabolic activity where the activity is very low metabolic activity is very low observation is that there could be structures in the brain where you could observe either hyper metabolic activity or hypo metabolic activity and that person is suffering from pnes so we wanted to validate this we wanted to do a systematic study here and also see whether we can validate this across a very large population of patients as a first step towards this goal we are currently developing uh, the tools uh, that help the doctors to obtain the average metabolic activity the mean and standard deviation of metabolic activity in each region and then you you map it with, with the corresponding regions in the patient to be analyzed and in those regions you compare the metabolic activity of this patient so yeah assume that on the left hand side you have pet scans of uh, uh, healthy subjects and you align them all bring them all into the same space and then compute the mean and standard deviations of metabolic activities compare them with the current subject to be analyzed and see if you can observe any hyper or hypo metabolic activity so this could help a lot in avoiding the wrong diagnosis into some other uh, category of disease so this is something that we are currently uh, working on in collaboration with swims hospital uh, another uh, application um, that i would like to briefly mention is detection and anticipation of epileptic seizures based on eeg signals uh, one of our uh, master's ms student is working on it samir ranjan sahu is working on this 
by the way you might be wondering we have not looked at uh, eeg in the classifications that we have seen so i'm sure most of you know the eeg uh, electroencephalogram where you would be recording the electrical activity of the brain this is not an image that you get but it's a 1d signal that you would get so it doesn't as such fall into medical imaging but it comes under uh, biomedical signal processing so this is something i just wanted to mention here about this application this is the same as epileptic seizures that we were talking in the previous uh, application which eeg is commonly used for detection as well as after detection for monitoring of that patient also eeg based uh, analysis is done in this work uh, why they use eeg is uh, it it captures the electrical activity of the brain so there is no radiation compared to other uh, scans this is less cost and it is portable but there are issues as well this is very sensitive to noise and uh, the physical activity that the person is doing also this is very sensitive there are, this is a very interesting biomedical signal processing uh, problem epilepsy you detect it from the abnormal electrical activity of the brain for example uh, the left hand side is showing you the electrical activity that you would observe in different channels for a non seizure patient and the right hand side would uh, show you when there is an occurrence of seizure so far there are lot of methods that could uh, detect the seizure but uh, very few methods are there which could uh, predict occurrence of seizure let's say 20 minutes before 40 minutes before or one hour before so this would be particularly helpful when uh, someone is suffering from epilepsy and uh, he is under monitoring and if you know in advance or if you can predict with a reasonable uh, accuracy that there might be an occurrence of an epileptic seizure in the next 20 minutes that would be very helpful there are so far just two or three methods are available as of now so this is something that uh, one of our students samir is working on and in fact he got uh, pretty good results here another application that some of our students are working is phase unwrapping for mr imaging so mr imaging is a very uh, important application uh, where signal processing plays a very vital role this is perhaps the only imaging modality where you acquire your image in the fourier domain and then take inverse fourier transform to get the image in the spatial domain yeah some of you might be remembering that phase unwrapping is an important problem that you come across when you are dealing with the fourier transform and inverse fourier transform so again this is a very important problem when it comes to mr imaging as well where you are acquiring the image in the fourier domain and then in order to get the image in the uh, spatial domain you will be taking a inverse fourier transform so this is something uh, where uh, we are working right now to come up with deep learning based approaches for accurately unwrapping the phase uh, which is very critical in uh, getting the accurate uh, spatial information these are the applications that we are working uh, in our group here at iit tirupati so i also mention three more applications that i happen to work earlier during my phd and postdoc one of the applications that i was working is automated segmentation tools for radiotherapy treatment planning of head and neck cancer when someone is suffering from head and neck cancer what would happen is there are certain regions here that are referred to as lymph nodes where this cancerous cells gets accumulated these lymph nodes are something that act as filters where all this cancerous cells gets accumulated in certain cases the patient has to be given radiotherapy okay that's it comes under the field of radiation oncology and for doing that there are recently very advanced methods called as intensity modulated radiotherapy for example imrt in that case what would be required is in order to suppose we want to give radio radiotherapy for a particular region that has to be delineated in the scan so there are actually not just those organs but also there are two things one is referred to as target volumes and another is referred to as 
organs at risk. So both these things have to be uh, delineated or labeled or annotated uh, and, and that has to be given as an input for your radiotherapy treatment planning system. And uh, doing this manually is quite uh, time consuming. Uh, say for example the studies says that it could take uh, uh, around six to eight hours to do this radiotherapy treatment planning just for one patient uh, where uh, an expert has to sit there and do it. So this work aims at uh, automatically using your image processing techniques, image processing methods, can we automatically label these things even if we are able to do it at an accuracy of 80% of accuracy. The latter if the doctor has to on top of it has to correct if there are any errors that would uh, hardly would take maybe half an hour or so which is still much better than a doctor sitting there, an expert sitting there and spending six to eight hours of time. So this is again done with the, the hospital Freiburg radiation oncology department uh, there. This is uh, the problem where we want to automatically segment the regions of interest, both the target volumes as well as organs at risk. By the way, the segmentation is a very challenging problem here because for the structures of that you, need, you want to segment here, you hardly see any contrast with its surrounding structures there. So because of that, conventional uh, image processing techniques fail there. There are something uh, referred to as atlas-based segmentations. So those are the kinds of uh, approaches that we would use here. I think at this point that information is good enough. So another application that I will quickly take you through is the fusion of 3D ultrasound and 3D CT images for the treatment of retinoblastoma. This is the work that has been done in collaboration with the uh, Luzon University Hospital SHU and uh, Geneva University Hospital HUZ in Switzerland. This is a childhood uh, blindness basically retinoblastoma as uh, they have tumors inside the eye and this co commonly occurs for uh, kids around four years old and comes hereditarily. This is a very aggressive tumor. There are different kinds of treatments and beyond a particular point it requires giving radiation therapy to the eye to kill those cancerous cells. So for this the conventional approach used is to take CT scan or CT scan is 3D anyway and then in that you try to identify the tumors. There are certain landmark things here that tells you for example the tumor will be at the back of the lens of the eye. So they, they will try to figure it out and mark it and give radiation in those areas. But with the recent developments that have happened, now they could acquire the 3D ultrasound as well. The good thing with CT is it would give you a very good contrast for the bones. With the bones you will know clearly where the eyeball is and also lens also you could see reasonably well in that. But the problem with the, the CT scan is you won't be getting a good contrast for the tumor as such. So tumor will be only partially visible. That textural changes are very subtle and that you won't be able to see clearly in the CT image. On the contrary, in the ultrasound, this tumor can be observed well, but the problem there is once you start looking into ultrasounds, you will realize that that's perhaps the most difficult uh, imaging modality to deal with for an engineer. It has a lot of noise. You should understand a lot of things to see which is noise and which is the actual object of your interest. So there, while you could see the texture very clearly, the problem is you won't be able to see the boundaries, the bones very clearly, which are very important uh, landmarks in identifying and accurately segmenting the tumor. So this work aims at combining. So the patient undergoes a CT scan as well as ultrasound scan. Then you combine these two modes so that's called as multimodal imaging so that's what this work aims at as i mentioned this is a done with Lujan university hospital and geneva hospital and this is uh, done in our uh, epfl team there with uh, dr mary i, I partly contributed uh, to this work so there uh, what earlier the doctors used to do is one scan is taken in Geneva and another scan is taken in Luzon. So for example ultrasound in um, Geneva they will tell that from so and so landmark you go 2 mm and that's where the tumor is. And then here on the phone they will listen to it and, and then they try to mark it on the CT scan. So you could understand the difficulties involved there. This work is aimed at um, the fusion of ultrasound with the C 3D ultrasound with the 3D uh, CT scan so that 
you will do the segmentations of the bones in the CT scan. You transfer them into the ultrasound. You nicely do the segmentations then of the tumor in the ultrasound. Now these two are mapped. So that information you again map it back to CT scan. The reason being the radiotherapy treatment planning is primarily based on the CT scan. So that information is again transferred back to the CT scan. So this is the scope of this work. So again I will uh, skip the further details here. Uh, except that I'll just show you here for example in the CT scan you make a parametric modeling for the eyeball and lens you could assume them to be ellipsoids and then you define an energy minimization function and go ahead and do that and then you transfer that information to the ultrasound so whatever you look at here is an ultrasound ultrasound by the way has a very high resolution compared to the CT scan so you could get uh, the details of that tumor at a very high resolution there as I said once you know the eyeball and lens information is transferred here to the ultrasound you know the boundaries of your tumor so that you use it you delineate the tumor here and transfer it back to the CT scan the last application that I, I am going to briefly mention uh, in this lecture is the early detection of dementia using MR brain imaging. Uh, uh, the general word you could use for it is forgetfulness. This graph shows here the x-axis is showing clinical disease states. So at what level can you diagnose it? That's what it is telling you here. Normal uh, versus the patient with the dementia so cognitively normal uh, from normal it comes to cognitively normal then comes to mild cognitive impairment and dementia and the red curve is telling you where you could observe cognitively that person not able to perform in as somebody with normal brain would be performing so before you see cognitive impairments you could in fact see even before that some structural changes in the brain so if one could analyze from the MR scan of the brain different structures there we will be able to assess whether someone is going to get affected with let's say mild cognitive impairment so that's the beginning stages and then after that it could go to dementia so the early detection is possible for dementia if with the analysis of the structural information of the brain so that's what uh, this is while i was in the industry this is something that i have been working on to give you how this happens for example let's not go into the details of what exactly the structures are but in the center of the brain what you are seeing there is lateral ventricles so you could see the enlargement of the ventricles and also you could see changes abnormalities in the hippocampus of the brain so this study aims at what are the normal volumes and shapes and sizes that you could expect for various structures in the brain when someone is uh, healthy uh, cognitively healthy and somebody with male cognitive impairment and somebody with alzheimer for example alzheimer's is one kind of dementia so somebody uh, suffering with alzheimer's disease so this is a large study that would one could uh, perform again uh, uh, image processing will be a backbone uh, for doing such studies so with that I'll try to wrap up uh, the applications that you would see here we have seen for example the first application was using uh, traumatic brain injuries uses CT scans then uh, psychogenic non epileptic scissors would be using PET scans as well as CT scans and the third application is using uh, yeah it's more like a biomedical signal rather than being an image but that's where EEG signal is there and the next one is a conventional signal processing problem of phase unwrapping in MR imaging. And uh, the fifth one is a CT scan. Okay, sixth one uses both 3D ultrasound and 3D uh, CT and fusion of them. And the last application using MR imaging. And you could also see here these applications also cover different kinds of uh, analysis that you have to do. For example, there are cases where you have to do detection. There are cases where you have to do classification, in some cases segmentation and in another cases developing the tools for doing the statistical analysis. Hope uh, it gave you uh, some idea of uh, different possible applications in medical image analysis. With that let's wrap up this uh, lecture and uh, see you in the next video lecture. Thanks for watching. Bye.
Take care.